What's up, good people? How you doing? Welcome to Stock Up with Larry Jones. For those of you that's new to the page, go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. And those of you that's been rolling with me for a while, just hit the like button. If I say something that you like, um, go ahead and hit the like button. Um, I am a uh, Weeble sponsor. I sponsor the Weeble app. You can trade three and a half hours before the market opens and four hours after it closes. You deposit $100, you get two free stock worth up to $1,850. That's worth it along with people. Uh, and it has become my number one trading platform. Let's get into the proposed tax hike. I'm going to keep this one a little brief. I'm heading to a funeral. But I will tell you that the proposed tax hike is something that the market reacted negatively to yesterday, uh, as we all saw. And uh, because the rate was ridiculous, the proposed rate was ridiculous. And um, so I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to play this short clip um, and then we'll discuss it afterwards. 43.4% total rate would be the highest capital gains rate in U.S. history and the highest in the world. Biden's proposal to raise that top rate uh, for capital gains from 23.8% to 43.4% when you include that Obamacare surtax would make the first time that capital is actually taxed higher than ordinary income. So who is most effective? What only applies to those with income over a million dollars. So that's about the top 1.5%. But that group gets about half of their income from capital gains and capital gains income is easily shifted. So the tax foundation says that on its own, this tax hike would actually reduce government revenue by $123 billion over 10 years. And because business owners and investors would sell in advance of any increase to avoid that higher rate, basically you would get a huge avoidance before that tax. Now the combined state and federal rates would be a record in especially high tax states. California, wealthy tech founders or investors who sell stock would pay a combined rate of 56.7%. In New Jersey, it would be 54.1%. And in New York City, the top combined tax rate on capital gains would be 58.2%. So there you have it. You see where um, uh, all of the controversy is. It is an outrageous amount. It is a, it is in, in some states, in some cities, in some states, you're talking about doubling uh, the tax rate. And so what happens is we have to understand we're retail investors. Um, these, uh, the, the people that make over a million dollars, a lot of them are the ones that create jobs. They're the CEOs, they're the companies, they're the ones that's creating the jobs. And, and it messes with Wall Street. And I could tell you right now, in retail investors, we're only 25% of the market. They're 75% of the market. So if they start selling off all of their stock, then it's gonna cause our stock to, to plunge, right? Now, don't panic because this is Larry, this is what I'm saying. Um, most analysts think that when they get through fighting, the tax will wind up being somewhere around 28.9% or 28 to 29%. And I also do too. As a matter of fact, um, no Republican is going to go for it. And a lot of Democrats are not going to go for it because it's actually going to be a job killer. Uh, check this uh, video clip out. We should point out that Josh is a Democrat, Nicole is a Republican, but they have come together on this issue that's pretty important to both of their states. Um, you both heard what Robert just laid out. Because of the SALT cap, in your state, Josh, it would be 54.1% that, that wealthy residents would be paying on their capital gains. And Nicole, for you in New York City, it'd be 58.2%. How do you feel about that, Josh? Not good. I mean, I, I, I think uh, we, you know, we of course haven't seen the actual proposals yet. We're just hearing some early signs of numbers, but I'll tell you, these numbers are too high. You know, as we've talked about before, Becky, given how uh, high taxes are uh, and, and how hard we've been hit uh, post uh, what they did to gut salt in states like mine and, and the Coles, uh, it's just brutal. And we need to look for ways to actually make things more affordable. Um, we're losing people and jobs in my state. This is a Salt is an issue that's really hit the middle class very hard in my district. 
given the fact that uh, in Bergen County, the average property tax is $15,000. You, you look at, at other states like Alabama, it's $500. Um, so you understand why states like ours have been hit so hard and people, families hit so hard. So the idea of raising taxes more just doesn't make any sense to me. Josh, there's, there's a thin majority in the House. Um, would you vote for this proposal to take those higher taxes, like we're hearing, if this is the proposal, granted this is just a proposal at this point, but would you vote for this? Would you support this if SALT was not reinstated? Well, what I've said pretty clearly is if, if they change the tax code that affects families in my district, uh, and, and, and that's what they go forward with, and it raises taxes that was my district and does not include any SALT so that actually taxes go up, I'll be against it. So I'm telling you guys that, remember, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm suggesting to you guys that this is really a, I believe, a buying opportunity. And so sometimes bad news pre, uh, um, make good opportunities for those of us that want to get in. Tonight, uh, this evening, we're going to talk about some stock. I'm going to just show, share with you guys what I'm going to be buying and what I have been buying um, based on this news, I'm going to do some more buying today and we'll discuss it, uh, later on this afternoon. Um, and so, cause you're going to have time, this is going to play out over a period of probably weeks. Um, so, but I will just tell you guys that in the end it's not going to be that bad. I believe it's, it's going to be very difficult for him to get this bill passed and it's already getting hit with a lot of negativity. So you just really need to hold your positions. Don't let this force you into panic selling, but you also need to see what buying opportunities that this may avail you. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at opportunity now because I don't see this as a big time threat. Right now, the market is reacting to it negatively. Of course, if you are, if, if you made over a million dollars and you're up 50% on some of your stock or or 30% on some of your stock, then you get hit with a tax, uh, a capital gains tax that high, you would be better just to sell the stock. And so what some will, will probably do is try to beat that out and start selling. And it causes the stock market to negatively react. So you'll know what's going on. So I don't just look at charts, but I, list, I look at the, the psychology of investing and I will tell you in 2020, I made more money off of the psychology of investing than the charts. And so that's how we have to look at this thing. It's, it's, it's not checkers, it's chess and there's movements and you have to move accordingly. Okay. But there is plenty of money to be made. I always say this and I didn't make it up. It's true. There's money to be made in a bear market. There's money to be made in a bull market. Okay. Last year was a bull market. Now we're in a bear market. Good people. So I'm going to, I'm going to just cap this off right there just to caution you guys to be, uh, just take a breath, let this play out. I don't think it's going to end bad. I think it's going to end well. I, I think, I do think, uh, we we got better days in Q3 after we get over what's finishing out the correction. All right. And so, um, that's it. Good people and, uh, good trading. We will see you uh, later on this afternoon. Okay. Live, love, laugh, and learn.